Good morning on this uh, seventh day of Easter, uh, Sunday of Easter, and just a couple of announcements. Keep all the folks in, in prayer. Uh, those that you've been concerned about or have been doing uh, very well, and we keep them in our prayers. Uh, also, our newsletter will be coming out. So if anybody has anything to put in the newsletter, we need that right away, this week, as soon as you possibly can, uh, to put it out there in the newsletter. We have been talking about when are we going to come back to worship, and we have written some protocols. We'll get those out to you on how we'll do that at Living Lord Lutheran Church. Uh, we set a tentative date of the 7th of June. We don't know if that's going to happen, but that is when we are going to start recording. We, this is a Tuesday when we're recording for the 2024, but we're going to start recording on Sunday, the 7th of June. So if we do come back and some people want to come in and disperse themselves a little bit with masks on, um, We'll start that on June 7th uh, on there. And we'll let you know if it's open to the whole congregation at that time. But at least we're going to be prepared. We are on holy ground. Let us worship. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the Good Shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side. And on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us join together in singing our gathering hymn, 713.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also with you. you.
first reading is from Acts, the first chapter. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, to grab together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please join me in Psalm 68. Sing to God who rides upon the clouds. Let God arise and let God's enemies be scattered. Let those who hate God flee. As smoke is driven away, so that you should drive them away. As the wax melts before the fire, so let the wicked perish in the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. Sing to God. Sing praises to God's name. Exalt the one who rides the clouds. I am is that name. Rejoice before God. Sing to God who rides on the clouds. In your holy habitation, O God, you are a father to orphans, defender of widows. You give the solidarity a home, and bring forth prisoners into freedom. But the rebels shall live in desert places. O oh God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth quaked, and the skies poured down rain. At the presence of God, the God of Sinai, in the presence of God, the God of Sinai. You sent a bountiful rain, O God. You restored your inheritance when it languished. Your people found their home in it, in your goodness, O God. You have made provisions for the poor. Sing, Sing to God, who rides upon the clouds. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. You lie in the heavens, O God, in the ancient heavens. You send forth your voice, your mighty voice. Ascribe power to God, whose majesty is over Israel, whose strength is in the skies. How wonderful you are in your holy places, O God of Israel, giving strength and power to your people. Blessed be God. Sing to God who rides upon the clouds. Our second reading is from 1 Peter, the fourth chapter. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves, keep alert, like a roaring lion, your adversary the devil prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, 
For you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Again, we see in the readings the contrast between before uh, Jesus returns uh, the resurrection as they are in this room together, they're waiting for Jesus to return as he said he would. They are there. They are listening to what Jesus had said. We hear in the gospel text this prayer that Jesus prayed. You have given me these people. I have trained them up. They've heard, I've given them everything that you have told me to do to prepare them for the ministry that they have been chosen to do. And now I am returning to you. They're ready, Lord. Take me so that I might prepare a place for them. And so we're now seeing this relationship, this trusting relationship that the, the disciples have. They are in this room by themselves, constantly praying praying constantly to the Lord. Not forgetting what Jesus had taught them, but reiterating, going back and forth, sharing, connected with 
with Christ and with the God the Father. It is a routine. It is a discipline. And that's what we are called to do, is have this discipline and faith. It's not just good enough for Jesus that we say, okay, I believe. We have work to do, right? And we, when we do our work, we have to practice it. We have to do it over and over again so that we become, you know, the artisans in everything that we do, that we becomes more perfected. We're opening up our eyes for people to critique us on are we doing our work good? And so we are called out there. And now we see Paul going to Ephesus. Uh, and it is in the, uh, the book of Ephesians, that letter to them that we hear about the armor of God. And anyone that was worked with or was in vacation Bible school a few years ago, we put on the armor of God. I remember the children marching in here uh, to sing their songs to their parents that last night with their helmets on, their shields, and their swords, you know, because those are the symbols of the armor of God. Sounds warlike, but I assured the parents that <laughs> they were, the song they were singing is, and we'll fight until we die. But I had to explain to the parents, no, they understand that sometime we're going to pass away. But during this time, the fight is not punches and, and hurting others. The fight is to share the gospel. And they understood that. They have work to do, and they're going to continue to do this ministry they are going to not, you know, give up and, and just pass away and go, oh, God will take care of this. No, God has empowered me. God has brought me on to the team. We remember the Great Commission. Go, make believers, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and continue to teach them every command that I have given you. You're going to hear something about that next Sunday from Bryson as he proclaims his faith and affirms his baptism. Yet we, we see the, the disciples are gathered together. We see new believers, so Paul has shared. These are folks that believe that Paul hasn't even had a chance to really give instruction to but they believe in this Jesus Christ. They're probably new believers. Uh, as Jesus may, may describe, they may be still sort of on pablum, or whatever you call that word, you know, for little babies, you know. They're, they can't handle the big stuff yet, but they believe. They are on this path of faith. And Paul commends them and loves them for however they understand that. But together, we'll have this conversation, we'll build this relationship, and we'll understand this Jesus even more. That's what we're called to do, not to sit back. This week, I went to a Lowe's store down in Columbus, and I go to the, to the checkout, and because I'm a veteran, I get a discount. But you always have to give them your phone number and they look it up and you're registered in there. And so I'm talking through the glass panel and I'm giving my phone number. And when I walk away after buying the products that I'd gotten, another clerk 15 feet away says, are you from Warren? I'm going, First, tell me why you even asked me that question. Are you from Warren? Is there something printed on the back of my head? And she says, well, your area code 330, that's the area code up in Warren. 
I said, well, my phone is actually from the Worcester, Wayne County area, but I am the pastor at Living Lord Lutheran Church. So I've, I've thrown out that faith flag and she says, well, actually, I'm, I'm from a little village in Cortland. And I said, and I told her where I live and this connection. And she says, well, I was actually baptized as a Mormon. But, she proclaims, we believe in this Jesus Christ who saved us. And she says, I don't think we should ever have differences between our denominations. We have these different understandings. And I said, I totally agree. And we need to get together and I need to hear more about your faith and we can share this dialogue together. I don't know how many people heard, but I know that there are a couple of clerks who were not checking out anybody at the time who were turned and listening in on this dialogue. Not one of difference, but one of coming together. That's how I try to practice this. And we won't know, perhaps, what comes of this, but some might be able to say, I remember that day, and this has opened up my world for me, and maybe it continues to spread. Just like the word spread, even to the, the people in Ephesus. And they became believers. It wasn't Paul who shared that news. It was somebody that Paul shared the news with who eventually shared the gospel with those people. And then they got to meet Paul. They came together. So what a glorious day that was for Paul to go, Lord, this is really working. <laughs> we are spreading the world, the, the word to the four corners of the earth, farther than it ever was even when you were here, Christ. We did this in this smaller area, and now we are going out and doing the ministry that you've asked us to do. It might not be a geographic area that we go to, it might be those little hidden corners, those people who need this Christ. They need the hope that we live into. It might be those little dark spaces that you know where they're at and you can take the light to them and share this gospel. So the apostles ask, when is this time to come? And Jesus said, it is not for you to know. It's for you to get to work. Amen. Let us join together in singing our hymn of the day.
confess our faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternal begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. O oh God, call your people to be one as you are one. Unite your church in the truth of your gospel, the love of our neighbor, and the call to proclaim your reign to all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Breathe life into your creation. Guide your people as we explore the mysteries of the universe. We pray for the work of scientists and mathematicians whose skill enriches our understanding. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Make your justice known among the nations of the earth. Protect the vulnerable. Redirect those who use violence and greed as weapons. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come to the aid of your people. We pray for those engulfed in grief, those without supportive families, and for all who are isolated, powerless, or afraid, that all might, may rest in their anxieties in your care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give courage to all who embark on new ventures. We especially remember this day those who risk their lives to serve in our armed forces. Grant safety to those serving at home or abroad, and assure them of your never-failing strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Raise all your saints to eternal life. Until that day, we give you thanks for the faithful examples of those who have listened to your voice and now rest in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you always. And you. Please be seated for the blessing of our offerings.
one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to life, fill you with hope, turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Christ is risen just as he said. Go in peace. Share the good news. Hallelujah. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.